new kids. We miss you guys so much. Thank you for joining us. If you are a first time guest, welcome. You guys all look really good this morning. I mean it. The best thing about Avenue Kids Online is that you can wear anything to church. I mean, I am currently wearing my robe. It's so nice and soft. Anyways, we are on a brand new series called Focus, Take a Closer Look. And a brand new series means a new big idea. When you focus on what you know, you can put your faith in what you don't. As always, I love to do moves with a big idea. When you focus on what you know, you can put your faith in what you don't. Now, because this is our very first time doing this big idea, I'm gonna have you guys mirror me. I'm gonna do one part, then have you do it after me. Here we go. When you focus on what you know, you can put your faith in what you don't. That was so good, Avenue Kids. Make sure to show us that you know how to do the big idea by tagging us on Instagram at Avenue LV Kids or on our Facebook at Avenue Church. Now, let's head over to our game. Today we are playing a game that involves Oreos, my absolute favorite. Now, for this game, you can play along with us or you can put your knowledge to the test. Brittany and I are gonna play three rounds of the Oreo Schmooves game and you have to guess who you think will win. Now, each of us will put an Oreo on our forehead using only our face. We will get the Oreo from our head into our mouth. If you're playing along, make sure you do not use your hands, okay? All right, here we go, round one. Who do you think will come out victorious? Obviously me. Come on now, let's Obviously. See. All right, tell Moon to go. Go. Oh. No, no, no! Oh! Oh, I got it! <laughs> wow! All right, guys, round two. Here we go. I'm gonna win again. No, no way. Tell me when to go. Go! Go! person that time as you answer that question let's head into worship Whew. that was tricky but so much fun if you're ready for even more fun then this is your chance it is worship time it is summer and with all this extra time on our hands to do fun things it is easier to put God on the back burner but when we spend time with him, we can feel even more refreshed than a cup of ice cold lemonade. As we sing our two songs today, Let Go and All Eyes on You, I pray you lift your voices and focus your heart on God. I close my eyes and colors fly. There's no hiding from your grace. I can't deny your heart for mine. And it's unrelenting chase I was on the edge of deception Caught up in my own hesitation Until your love took over me So I let go and I let love Show me life like it's supposed to be On a way you're away
Today we learn about what faith is and how faith means that even though I may not be able to see all that God is doing in the moment, I can trust that everything will be okay. Now we get to explore different stories throughout the Bible of people who stood firm in their faith and as a result, amazing things occurred. Let's see how this plays out. If you want to read along in your Bible, you can find it in Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 through chapter 12 verse 3. The Bible, it's 66 books of history stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how He created us and loves us so much that He made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Hebrews, chapters 11 and 12. Gotta have a little faith, 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 faith. Keep the faith. Take a leap of faith. You know, a lot of people toss around the word faith lately. We say you can break the faith or just take it all on blind faith. But true faith isn't blind at all. It's much more than just an inspirational word. True faith has to do with believing in all the things you can't see because you start with what you can see. 
Now, we can't see God with our physical eyes, but we can see the stories of people who came before us. Um, they lived in a broken world like we do, but they chose to follow God. They chose to trust his promise that one day he would send a rescuer that would make everything right again. The writer of uh, Hebrews in the New Testament tells us about some of these men and women in God's story. People like Noah, people like Abraham. Abraham. When God called Abraham, he was already getting old. He and his wife, Sarah, didn't have kids. Leave your country and your people. Leave your father's family. Go to the land I will show you. All nations on earth will be blessed because of you. God was planning on sending his rescuer as one of Abraham's great, 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 etc. grandchildren. But still, even though Abraham had God's promise, he still couldn't see the one God was sending. Still, Abraham went on a wild adventure following God's call. And even his descendants, Isaac, Jacob, and Joseph, all chose faith in God. Moses, too, was called by God from the fiery heart of a burning bush. Even though he was raised by Pharaoh's daughter, he chose to stand with his own people and face Pharaoh's anger to win freedom. We read about it like this in the book of Hebrews. Moses suffered shame because of Christ. He thought it of great value. See, when you check out Hebrews, you discover this huge list of people who followed God by faith, so many that the writer just stops trying to list all of them. Oh, but we can't forget Israel's most important king, David. Get up and anoint him. This is the one. Even though God had promised David would be king though, David spent years on the run from King Saul fearing for his life. Still, he chose to trust God. The Lord is my shepherd. He gives me everything I need. Now, none of these people in the Old Testament could see with their eyes how God was going to save his people, but they could see how he was working in their lives, how their needs were being met. So they chose to believe in his greater plan. They chose faith. Faith is being sure of what we hope for. It is being sure of what we do not see. That is what the people of long ago were praised for. Now, here's where the story turns. In Hebrews, we discover that none of those people in the Old Testament received what God had promised here on earth. That's because God had planned something better for us. So they would only be made perfect together with us. God's plan includes all of us from the very beginning of creation. So at just the right moment, at the perfect point in time, God sent his rescuer, the hero, his very own son, Jesus. Jesus showed us how to live. He showed us what God was like and he told us the most important thing. If you love one another, everyone will know you are my disciples. Love God, love others. It's the heart of the whole story. But then Jesus was killed and his friends thought the story was finished. Period, dot, the end until God raised him back to life. Jesus has defeated death, and those who follow him can live with him forever. But how do you follow someone you can't see? Well, that brings us back to faith. Let us keep looking to Jesus. He is the one who started this journey of faith, and he is the one who completes this journey of faith. He paid no attention to the shame of the cross. He suffered there, because of the joy he was looking forward to. So think about him, then you won't lose hope. The early believers, Peter and John and other followers of Jesus had seen him teach and heal. They saw him after God raised him to life. But after Jesus returned to heaven, the believers continued to live by faith. We have to speak about the things we've seen and heard. Because of what the new Christians in the early church had seen, they could believe in what they could not yet see, the end of the story, where God makes everything right. They kept the faith, and because they did, we can choose faith too. Now, I want you guys to think for a moment. When it is windy outside, can you guys see the wind? And I don't mean like when it's blowing, you see the leaves blowing. I mean, if you were to stand in the complete desert with no trees around, could you see the wind? I bet you can't, but you know it is there. You don't question it because you feel it. 
Now as Christians, we can't see God physically, but we still believe in him. That's called faith. In our video, we learned about Noah, Abraham, Moses, and David. All of these men had faith, but that doesn't even begin to explain the many, many, many other stories in the Bible of faith-filled people. And just like them, we can have faith in God too. Our memory verse of this series explains it this way in Hebrews 11:1. 1. Faith is being sure of what we hope for. It is being sure of what we don't see. Think about that this week when an obstacle comes your way and you don't know how to overcome it. Have faith. Whoa, faith is so important to have in our lives and I didn't even realize it. To see how faith can apply to your life even more, let's talk about these small group questions. I'm going to say each question and they will come up on the screen below. I will give you time to write it down so you can reflect on them. Question number one, if we can't see Jesus, how do we know if he's real? Question number two, what would you tell someone who doesn't believe God or Jesus exists? Question number three, what do we see around us that helps us to know that God is real? And question number four, when you have doubts about your faith, who can you talk to? All right, guys, thank you so much for joining us for our first week of Focus, Take a Closer Look. As you go into this week, always remember, when you focus on what you know, you can put your faith in what you don't. Before we close, let's pray. Dear God, thank you so much for today. Thank you for all of my friends that I have in Avenue Kids, and around the city. Father, thank you for the gift of faith. Thank you for always being there, even if I feel like you're not. I know that you are always looking out for me and I am so thankful for that, God. We love you, we worship you, we praise you. In the name of your son, Jesus, amen. All right, guys, see you next week. <laughs>